Hello, this is uh, John Canalopoulos, uh, clinical professor of uh, NYU Medical School in New York, New York, and uh, uh, eye surgeon here at the Laser Vision Institute in Athens, Greece. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, try and explain to you how we've uh, been using clinically uh, the uh, traditional OCT device. Uh, this is the OptiView device, uh, the Avanti, latest model by uh, uh, OptiView. Uh, we've used it for many years uh, as a device uh, for macular diagnoses uh, and uh, over the last three years um, not only to define cornea on surgery. Okay, so uh, I omitted to mention that this is a very simple exam for the patient. It's non-contact. It takes just a few seconds. Uh, we get thousands of cross-sections of the cornea, so the accuracy is much higher than the uh, high-frequency ultrasound we had studied in the past that requires a... a um, water bath for the patient's cornea. And you can see here, this is for instance a uh, pre-LASIK evaluation on a young lady. We were getting confirmation of our sine fluke uh, uh, pachymetry measurements. Uh, she's uh, over 580 microns at the thinnest part of the cornea. We also pay a lot of attention uh, where in relation to the center of the cornea the thinnest part of the cornea is. Uh, we think that this is important in diagnosis of keratoconus. And now we're going to epithelium. This is not perfect epithelium. You can tell it's a lady from the slight irregularities within it, but it is relatively normal. We're at 52 microns, which is the normal epithelium as we had defined in our publication last year in the Journal of Cornea, looking at the very large cohort of normal patients. Um, and uh, we're gonna go on and see a, a dry eye patient. We're seeing here uh, one of our signature LASIK extra cases. You can see the hyper reflectivity within the LASIK flap from the prophylactic cross-linking. This was a very high myo. Um, but besides that, um, we've had great help from uh, OptiView in establishing uh, uh, cornea epithelial mapping besides the cornea pachymetry mapping, which is obviously far more accurate than uh, sine imaging or ultrasound assessment of the pachymetry. So we're having here a new entity, in uh, my opinion, in refractive surgery. And in general, uh, dry eye patients and the evaluation of cataract uh, uh, patients before and after their surgery. What we're seeing here is um, obviously the area ablated from this LASIK, uh, myopic LASIK extra patient. Uh, we're also seeing here a little bit of post-LASIK dry eye. Uh, and this is where this um, extremely elegant device of giving us qualitative and quantitative mapping of the cornea epithelium can help us monitor the uh, natural improvement of the dry eye or the potential intervention that we will um, uh, that we'll employ in a specific patient. For instance, this uh, young lady uh, was dry for over a month and we employed plugs, um, topical cyclosporin, along with lid hygiene. Um, and uh, in her subsequent scans, uh, there was dramatic improvement uh, besides her improvement in visual acuity and her own personal subjective uh, assessment. So I think we're reaching an era uh, if you may, that uh, we will have besides our standard clinical evaluation and uh, the more rogue testing such as tear breakup time and um, Shermer testing, uh, a more elegant and more specific way to establish a diagnosis of dry eye. And we've published this uh, recently in the journal Cornea, uh, being able to evaluate uh, dry eye through a refractive procedure. And what we're studying and we're uh, trying to make sense, and we think we have made sense, is how these epithelial irregularities may affect refraction. One has to wonder if the epithelial hypertrophy, edema, uh, uh, whatever the cause of this thickening measured by the OCT device, uh, how it may affect uh, placido disc topography, how it may affect standard sign fluke imaging of the cornea, and uh, overall, how it may affect the quality of vision of this patient. Uh, these uh, data uh, and these uh, clinical pictures uh, are quite compelling to ignore. Uh, and we're trying to um, make sense of this uh, along with uh, the uh, subjective and refractive uh, performance of uh, post-refractive surgery and post cataract surgery patients. Um, and we think we can make a lot of sense out of this. Uh, it is a clinical tool we use in every patient that we evaluate regardless of diagnosis and regardless of age. Um, and we think uh, once we go from 6 millimeter to 9 millimeter, we'll have a far more better algorithm to, um, to make a thin net and being able to objectively 
screen for dry eye, uh, screen for cornea irregularities that may interfere with refraction, either if that's in the refractive surgery population we're evaluating or the older cat surgery population. So uh, as I promised you here, we're looking at the uh, typical keratoconus, mild keratoconus patient. Uh, with a cross-section of the OCT, we can see the uh, degradation of Bowman's membrane, and this is where uh, we feel that sign fluke may be off, placido may be off due to it not being very accurate in the center. Uh, so the Cassini multi-spot and the OCT may give us a better uh, view uh, looking at the center, the thinnest part of the cornea is off the center. Now looking at keratoconic uh, corneas at the epithelial maps, we're, we think we're seeing a dry eye upside down, uh, meaning the, as has been described previously, the upper part of the cornea the thicker part of the cornea is trying to compensate for the protruding part of the cornea by thickening the epithelium and the epithelium over the uh, protruding area of the cornea. The actual slopes of the cone and the peak of the cone is, is quite thin. The findings that we've published on this are not as uh, extreme as the ones uh, seen in the literature with uh, high frequency ultrasound, but we have to appreciate that these are different modalities. This has an air interface the high frequency ultrasound has a water interface uh, and we have uh, uh, theorized that uh, even in corneas that are not as ectatic, the overall uh, increase in epithelial thickness may uh, depict a biomechanically unstable cornea. It may be a reaction of the uh, cornea epithelium to more increased oscillation of the cornea and epithelial injury. Okay, so very interesting for our work, our signature Athens protocol combined topography guided PRK normalization with high frequency cross-linking. You can see that the pachymetry maps show that this patient has a cone just off the center, which we cannot see anymore in the epithelial maps. The epithelial maps are subnormal, uh, about 40 microns epithelial thickness in these uh, corneas, uh, reinforcing uh, the data we had seen with high frequency ultrasound that cross-linked corneas have thinner than average epithelium and much more normal, despite that the cornea thickness is different and that this patient still has some keratoconus. So uh, this is functionally uh, showing the uh, effect that cross-linking with the athos particle has on these corneas. And we can, of course, see the line that we have described previously um, the, that shows the depth of cross-linking, the hyperreflectivity, and the cross-section. I hope you found this presentation interesting. This is John Calopoulos signing out from Athens. Thank you.